Good day, Bashar. I knew you good day. <laughs> you woke me up. Um, if a person has a driving passion in life, something that gives them greater excitement and joy than anything else, yes. but they are physically incapable of carrying it out. Not possible. <laughs> Not possible. Not possible. Look at it this way. You're actually creating a contradictory definition there. Either the thing is truly representative of your highest passion, and therefore, by definition, you are capable of carrying it out in some way, shape, or form, or if you truly have no capability of carrying it out, it's not representative of your excitement in the way that you're imagining it. Uh huh. Do you understand the paradox here? Yes, and Because no. excitement, by definition, contains everything it needs to be acted upon. Everything. So if you can't act upon it, it's either not your excitement, or you just don't yet know how to imagine acting upon it in an imaginative way. So can you be more specific and let's explore this in more detail? Okay, in terms of my life, yeah. there is nothing I would rather do than dance. And what prevents you from doing so? Uh, it hurts a lot. It hurts a lot? It hurts a lot. In what sense? My ankles have collapsed and, uh, and my feet hurt. And the more I do it, the more it hurts and it becomes eventually more painful than joy. I see. Yeah. Now, when you say dance, what are you imagining seeing yourself doing? And where? <laughs> Moving in a very pleasant and comfortable and happy way. On in what environment? On a stage. Why? I like it. You like it? That didn't sound like passion. It feels really, really good and really, really warm. And yes. To please an audience. Have you ever danced in water? No. Why not? Wouldn't that allow you the support that you're looking for to allow you to dance more easily? I don't know. Water's not really a comfortable environment for me. Why not? It's kind of scary, and I don't really know how to move in it safely. It's scary? Yeah. Why is it scary? I don't know. You don't know? Well, let's find out. Oh, boy. <laughs> you brought this up. You brought up water. You want to dance? Let's dance. <laughs> Why is water scary? I'm not talking about the depths of the ocean. I'm just talking about enough to buoy you up so that you actually have more ability to move more freely. Okay, maybe a couple of feet of water I could do. So you're okay with that? I'm okay with that. All right. <laughs> and maybe there are other ways you can buoy yourself up. What about some sort of suspension system that takes all the weight off your feet entirely and yet allows you to bounce around like you're weightless in space? What about that? I don't know what about that. <laughs> Are you saying that your imagination hasn't given you these alternatives? You haven't even considered that there might be other ways for you to dance? Because you're just defeated before you begin? <laughs> defeated. <laughs> I apologize, but we'll take advantage of every possible pun that we can. We're shameless. Literally. We have no shame. So, here's the point. If it truly is your passion to dance, truly your passion, then you will stop at nothing. You will never assume it has to be done a certain way, the way everyone else does it. You will stop at nothing. You will exercise every single ounce of your imagination to find a way. In the short course of this conversation, I've given you two suggestions you say you never thought of. Well, the suspension one I had thought of, there's a, there are people doing that now. And what's wrong with that? Uh, I don't know. I haven't really explored it. I don't know if Why I Why can... don't you and see what happens? Maybe you will find <laughs> that it's something you actually enjoy. And while you're doing it, I'm not saying that has to be the end all be all. While you're doing it, because you'll be in a more joyful state, 
you might actually give yourself the ability to think of something else that might work too. Uh -huh. Yes? Yes. Now, aside from all that, there may also be things you can actually do for your body to strengthen your body in a variety of ways. Again, such as the detoxification and other things that will allow nutrients to go to where they need to go to heal your body, reducing stress in your life, other permission slips such as meditation or anything else your imagination comes up with, but allow yourself at least the opportunity to do some of these things and again, visualization and seeing yourself dancing, but not seeing yourself dancing with the limitations of, oh, that'll never happen that way, but just seeing yourself dancing with no conditions on it. And then you might see that the visualization might actually transform into something that will actually show you a way to do it. Okay. So are you also saying that the structural problems that I came in with can be fixed? They can either be fixed or they can certainly be circumvented by something else. Okay. It's just that you're thinking too traditionally. That's all. Mm -hmm. If you came in in an untraditional way, don't try to be traditional. It's not who you are. Think outside the box, as you say, on your planet. That's why you're stuck is because you're thinking, well, I don't fit and that's all I've got. I just don't fit. Who cares? Well, it's because every time I try to get strong again, um, the old injuries come along and the pain comes along. And, As we said, right. there are other ways you can alleviate the gravitational pressure mm -hmm. on yourself. Okay. And maybe by doing that, you will take a load off and you may get a little stronger in conjunction with some other things that you can do. But if you're also pushing yourself faster than you should be going safely, well, that's another issue you may need to look at within your belief system about why you think you need to do that. And what's your hurry? I didn't think I was doing that. You just said you were. You just said, I start to heal myself, and then suddenly I do something that brings the injury back. Isn't that what you just said? Well, it's that I, I know they're there and I'll feel... Oh, you do, do you? <laughs> you know they're there. See, to you, that's a fact. To us, it's just a theory. Okay. Are you following? Yes. Now, I understand this can be a little extreme for some of you, but that's all right. You can learn to wrap your mind around this. Have you heard us talk about the concept called the 13th step? I don't recall it. All right. Do you understand that you actually are a different person every moment, literally? Yes. Literally. Billions of times per second, you are a different person. But if you have a belief system that says you're not really a different person, you're just changing in little ways, but you're the same person, then you don't ever get to experience the truth about the fact that you literally are a different person. But if you know you're a different person, absolutely down to the level of your bones, then you start behaving like you know it automatically, mm -hmm. because what you know to be true, you just do. And when you know you are a different person, then that means that you have not only a different present, you have a different past. Mm -hmm. Because the past is created from the present. Because it's just a projection. It's just an illusion. It doesn't really exist. So if you know you're a different person, then you have a different past. Then if you become truly a different person in the 13th step, you never had this situation. Ever. It's not that you get over it, it's that you never had it. Now, I understand that's a stretch for a lot of you, but still you can begin to wrap your mind around this concept and see how far you can take it. Mm -hmm. does, Step at a time. <laughs> does, how does one do this? How do, you, how do you get to know it? I, I understand what you're saying, but how By do I... understanding the true structure and nature of existence and how it works. You see, all these things that we talk about, they're not opinions, they're observations. We are actually describing to you the mechanism of existence itself. We're describing how it works. In much the same way that if you were holding a red rose and I asked you what color the rose was, you would just say red. It's not an opinion, it's just an observation. We can see 
the mechanism of creation. That's where we're at in our evolution. So we're describing to you that we know these things are true because we can see that they are true. And when you start to know how it works and understand the mechanism clearly, then you will also know that this is true. And then it will be in your behavior because you know it to be true. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Does this help you? Yes. All right, now, one more thing. You will have help and have had help with this, and you will continue to have help with this from other levels, but you really need to open up your imagination and think outside the box, and don't be afraid to go in that direction just because it isn't traditional. You may start a whole new trend. <laughs> you may inspire so many other people by trying something no one's ever thought of before. Hmm. Have a little fun, do some experimentation. Yes, you can take it slow, whatever you want to do, but don't hem yourself in. Don't box yourself in. All right? All right. Is it a deal? It is a deal. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you for the lovely dance. Because this is a type of dancing, too. Greetings, Bashar. And a you good day. Um, I recently had a really uh, amazing interaction with an entity. Um, it claimed to be a non-biological artificial intelligence yes. from the Arcturian system. And this blew my mind. This was way beyond me. But I'm wondering... Where did it blow your mind to? <laughs> <laughs> Out. <laughs> um, so I had I'd never experienced anything like this before. You um, haven't? No, I haven't. But if it is just a projection of my higher self, I was wondering, from your perspective, what kind of artificial intelligence are, th are out there? This one seemed very Well, there are many different kinds of what you would call artificial intelligence, although they don't necessarily consider themselves to be artificial. Okay. But even our ship is an artificial intelligence. It's a crystallized representation of our higher mind, and we communicate with it telepathically. So there are many different kinds of projections. The idea is that even within a different dimension, something that is unto itself an intelligence can still project itself as appearing to be somewhat artificial because it's projecting into another dimension that isn't its natural dimension. And so to that dimension or the denizens therein, it might seem a little bit more artificial because it's simply a simulacrum, a representation. Does that make sense? Somewhat, yes. <laughs> well, in other words, you have a rubber sheet stretched out, yes? Yes. And somebody on the other side pushes their hand into it. So you see the imprint of the hand stretching into the rubber sheet, yes? Yes. But you're not seeing the hand, you're seeing the rubber sheet. Okay. Just conforming to the hand. You would call the rubber sheet the artificial intelligence that is symbolic of the real intelligence of the hand. Okay. Does that help? Yes, yes. All right. Great. Um, my other question is, uh, there, I'm still trying to comprehend the oversoul. Oh, well, you better give up now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of uh, getting that feeling myself. Um, yes. We generally talk about it within our own galaxy. Is that correct? Like an expression of an oversoul? Well, that's actually even a much higher level than you typically discuss. Okay. Because the approximately 7 billion people individually on your planet are only representative of about 300,000 to 500,000 oversouls. Okay. Okay. Um, then there can be an oversoul of all those oversouls. Then there can be an oversoul of all those oversouls, and on and on and on and on and on. Yes, reaching the galactic level and on up. So it goes to, it could possibly keep going, well, obviously, to other galaxies and of so course. on and so on. Of course, okay. because these are all the levels of all that is, that can be. Okay. If a galaxy, say, that's not the Milky Way or is, is you know, an, an external galaxy. Andromeda, for example. Yes. All uh, right. Potentially, they have a beginning and an end, yes? You mean the galaxy itself physically? Yes. Yes. Uh, when it ends, can a soul or an oversoul come from that galaxy and become part of this one? It can create an experience like that, yes. Okay. That's not mechanically what's happening, but I understand your question. Okay. Okay. Well, I've gone a blank, and I think that's all I have. <laughs> all right. Did you cut the cord to your oversoul? <laughs> I must have. <laughs> Yes, thank you. All right, well, thank you.
Hello, Bashar. Andy, you good day. I have a statement followed by a question for you. All right. Um, our mainstream scientists, and sometimes not our mainstream scientists, seem to be running up against a wall in terms of trying to figure out some of the, the big questions that still are in front of us as far as how the universe is put together and how it That's works. Okay. Um, we made a glue. <laughs> glue. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Um, it seems like we made a lot of progress in the early 20th century, and then we've kind of been pushing against a wall for a while. Um, well, you're still making some progress. We are, but what I see is about every 10 years, someone writes a book and says, we'll be there in 10 years. The 10 years goes by, and 10 years later, we're not that much closer than we were. So, well, again, that's because it will never end. Well, and that was one of my questions was, is there really a theory of everything, or do we just keep peeling back the onion one layer? There is, of course, a theory of everything. <laughs> and there is, of course, everything. But so it, if you wish to remain in the theory of everything, it will keep going. If you wish to understand everything, then you can have an understanding, but it will only be an understanding relevant and relative to the level that you're understanding from. So there will still always be more. And as I said, even when you reach the level of all that is, all that is being everything, even that can continue. Because there will always be something else for all that is to understand about itself. So the forces we're still trying to put together, once we get that done... Well, you'll have an understanding. Certainly, there is the concept of, in your terms, progress. Obviously, we, as a civilization, understand certain things your civilization does not yet. But you are in the beginning stages of some of the things that we do. But remember, because our dimension is 10 times faster than yours, we're 3,000 years ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So... And you have more understanding in certain ways than you had as a civilization 3,000 years ago. Yes? Yes. All right. But one of the main components that some of your scientists are beginning to understand needs to be added to the equation in order to have a clearer understanding is the concept of consciousness. Consciousness has to be part of the equation. Some of your scientists are beginning to understand this. Right. Right. A uh, second question I had relates to um, kind of a nascent theory that there's more of an electrical, comp electrical component to the way the universe is put together than gravitational. And there's a group that It seems depends on how you look at it. Okay. I guess maybe just break it down to the simple model of... Uh, you know, how a star operates, where the heat comes from. Yes. Um, well, you now know. you're talking about quantum processes. R right. And the traditional theory that's in play is that there's, that fusion is occurring in the center, and that's what generates the heat and light. Well, in general, but there are other things going on in there as well, including the concept of quantum tunneling. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, I was referring specifically to... Um, this group is working on an electrical model of how the sun and how stars work. Is oh, there, all right. Is there anything to that, or is that just there a... There is something a, to it, but it's not the whole picture. Okay. But they'll understand that. And you're going to find that in many different disciplines, people will come up with a certain component, and then ultimately will realize that all those components from the different disciplines can be put together to form a larger theory, a larger understanding. Because they will start to see those components as different expressions of one thing, even though they don't necessarily think they are now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it can be described in many different ways. It can be described through many different kinds of paradigms. It just depends on what angle you're coming from, what perspective you're coming from as to how you'll see it. That's all. It's the idea of, you understand the three blind men and the elephant? Yes. You get the analogy. Yeah. Do all of you get that analogy? One blind man feels the tail and says an elephant is like a snake or a rope. Another blind man feels the trunk and says similar things. It's a snake or it's a rope. Another one feels the body and says it's like a wall. Depends on the perspective you're coming from. But they're not seeing the whole elephant altogether yet. Right. The elephant in the room.
Does right. that make sense? Yes. Oh, yeah, very much so. Does this address your question sufficiently? It does. It does. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Tell you a good day. I will translate to her from Japan. Nihon kara kita, group de kita, Kumamoto Hiroe des. Nickname is Barbara. Hi, my name is um, Kumamoto, oh, Hiroe Kumamoto. Yes, but your nickname is Barbara. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Kimura sensei kara. I've been learning Bashar for 10 years. Bashar no Fukai Jindu no Ayo Manabi Ikikataga Kawari Mashita. Arigato Godaimas. Um my life was changed a lot, like really dramatically since I learned Bashar. No, oh, I thank you. Every day we play for Japan, we play, we play for world peace. Um, you pray for it? Well, what do you do about it, though? What actions do you take in the direction of your prayer? Um, in other words, how are you applying what you've learned in physical life? あの、今の生活に応用していますかはい。私はバシャルの教えで自分の生き方、自分の心の持ち方、そして祈ることによっていつも穏やかに平和で愛しながら、愛されながら生きています。I um, feel a lot of like deeply love and with through playing I I Feel like more calm down. That's fine, but I'm asking you, what are you actually doing to express the idea of creating more peace on your planet? What are you doing in the world? playing is an action. Not enough. It's one, but prayer is just being in a state of gratitude for what is. Let me give you an example. Translate. Let me give you an example. If you see someone fall down and trip and hurt themselves, and you go over and pick them up and help them feel better, that's a prayer, an active prayer. Doing something with your energy, doing something with your state of gratitude to help others. That's a true active prayer. あの、その世界平和のための一部ですけれども、それだけでは十分ではない。行動すること、感謝の念を持って行動すること
So prayer is fine to create the state of being for yourself inwardly, but also then where's the outward expression of the prayer in the world? I'm sorry, could you say that one more time? The prayer she's talking about, just praying, is wonderful for creating a state of being within herself, but then what does she do with that state of being as an outward expression of the prayer? It's fine to have the inward expression of the prayer, but where's the outward expression of the prayer that grounds it in physical reality? あなたの精神を保つことにはとても効果がありますけれども、行動を起こさないことには世界平和にはつながりません。Thank you. Does that make sense? All right. Just a moment. I am representative of the group, um, playing group in Japan. Yes. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Bashar, Bashar, you make me happy. Anyway, anytime. You, you made you happy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bashar. Hi, Bashar. And a you good day. It's good to see you. You're not seeing me, but thank you for the sentiment. I feel you. <laughs> I just have a personal question. Yes. I am wondering if I was a part of the hybrid program. Yes. And if I have hybrid children. Yes. Um, so I had an experience back in 1991, or whenever that was, um, where I carried a child full term. Not full term. Not full. Well, not full term. Oh, all right. Yeah, but I and then is he supposedly. Um, passed before he was born, but I, yes. I had him and, um, and I never saw him. Yes. And so I was wondering if that was a piece because as it was happening, I knew everything was okay. It's connected to it. It's not the whole picture, right? But I'm not really allowed to say much more to you. Sure. Yeah. I just felt like it was all fine. It is. And then it just, you know, like a voice told me that it was good. and It is. Yeah. And you will have more information coming to you in another way. But it's not really our job to give it to you. It belongs to someone else. Right. Right. It was just, that's really the only question I have. All right. And I'm super grateful. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Nania. So the question from our Ustream listener is, if Hawaii is the heart chakra, yes. oh, and by the way, this is this person's birthday, so. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, Everyone, if, happy, happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> um, <laughs> if Hawaii is the heart chakra, Shasta is the crown chakra, where are the other chakras located and what roles do they play? They are located in different places around your planet, and they play many different kinds of roles. <laughs> yes, I know, that's slippery. We've actually talked about this before, and right now, for a very specific reason we can't go into, we're not going to discuss that, because there are things that are about to change. So um, when you talk about the changes right now with the more interactive and the work that we're moving forward with the array, Yes. Um, what are some of the elements of our consciousness and how they've shifted that have allowed this new level to come through? Certainly there is more willingness and openness to the idea of contact with other beings from other civilizations. Certainly there is more willingness and openness and recognition of the part that you have already played as a civilization with respect to the hybridization agenda and the connections that that's one moment. One moment. One 
one moment. We apologize. We must move on from this question. Something is happening. The interstitial space and time matrix you know as physical reality because of changes in frequency of consciousness is destabilizing. This destabilization allows for shifts to enter that were not available before, rearrangements of agreements are being made, agreements are being rewritten on larger levels, higher levels, template levels. Reality is beginning to come apart at the seams. This allows for more fluidity and flexibility in your experience of space-time, more understanding of your connection to the dimension itself that you call physical reality. These are the main shifts occurring that allow for new experiences to come in, new agreements to be written, new consciousnesses to become part and parcel of the overall agenda. You are being joined by a new consciousness. Your world is being joined by a new consciousness that will embrace and contain and immerse you in a degree of energy and fluidity you have not experienced heretofore. Thus, many shifts will take place in how your world expresses this energy and the matrix that used to be will be no more. Over time, as you know it, this will shift more rapidly in the upcoming orbits that you refer to as years. Shifts will take place very slightly, almost unnoticeably, in the orbits of the planets themselves of your system. They will shift slightly outward, slightly outward, to represent the new expansive energy that has joined your system and will help propel and accelerate the experiences forward toward a new reality that you have yet to imagine that will be the first seed of the crystallization of the sixth hybrid race and also plant the seed that will ultimately lead to the seventh. That is all. Not sure what you're clapping for, but that's all right. Okay. Um, well, it's probably time for us to... Is there anything else that... It is time to take your break, short break, and we will resume the transmission for your holotope experience that will now include a new energy that wasn't here before. Okay. This will aid and assist in what is to come with regard to not only the array and the meditation associated with it, but many different factors that have to do with the idea of the fall of 2016. Okay. All right. So we will be... Take a short break. <laughs>
But all right, allow us to continue this transmission by first explaining what you experienced a few moments ago. As you understand your collective consciousness, you understand that it can be represented by many different kinds of large-scale archetypal energies. But because now we are focused on the idea of a new phase of interactivity with you, more openness and willingness on your part for contact to occur, more participation in the creation of new energies that will lead to contact, then what you experienced was the beginning of a new archetypal energy coming into your system that has never been there before, the archetype of the extraterrestrial itself. You have been dealing with individual extraterrestrials and have had discussions about extraterrestrial civilizations, but have never really yet, up to this point, included the archetypal energy of the extraterrestrial in your overall collective consciousness. But now it's here. It is, in a sense, squeezing its way into the array of archetypes that you have been used to for many thousands of years to present this new archetypal energy that can allow you more ability to immerse yourselves in that energy, more ability to explore that frequency. And that's what we will do now in this particular meditation is crystallize the idea of what the array represents, what this new archetype represents to the collective consciousness of your entire system. So become very relaxed. Breathe easily, and as you do, you can let your lights begin to shift and your music come up. Allow yourselves to relax and continue to breathe easily, deeply, and gently in and out. And as you focus upon the center of the holotope, allow yourselves to consider this an energetic symbol of the array of the vortex, of the master vortex of Sedona, centered at Bell Rock, the eye of the vortex, where all is calm while everything swirls around it and begins to accelerate round and round and round. With every breath, it picks up speed. With every breath, it begins to alter and shift its frequency. With every breath, it begins to expand its influence and impact on the other vortices near and far and begins to take on the quality of the archetype of the extraterrestrial, the archetype of contact itself. For this is a new chapter in your reality to stand on the threshold of interaction with other beings from other worlds, though we have and many others have been preparing you in this way through these dialogues, through the sightings of our crafts, through different kinds of interactions. Now more than ever before, it is taking on global proportions, solar systemic proportions, and galactic proportions as this archetypal energy comes in, as you breathe it into your reality, crystallize it into your reality ever more strongly, allowing yourselves to begin to feel the vibration of this new archetypal energy, the vibration of contact itself. And as you begin to add your energy to the vortex, and your intention to the vortex to allow it to take on those qualities, those frequencies that are representative and symbolic and reflective of contact, of the new archetype that has entered your collective consciousness, your domain. Allow yourselves to float freely in this energy, for it is all-encompassing even as it adds itself to the collection of archetypal energies that you are already familiar with, it also infuses each and every one of them with a new vibration 
an inclusive vibration that will allow you to stretch your minds and your imaginations to the stars. To allow you to know that as you accelerate and fine tune this vortex in any way, shape or form that you participate, you will be adding your energy to it and it will be adding its energy to you so that you will be able to recognize it and feel it within yourselves as part of your family, your family among the stars that embraces you that takes you in even as you take us in, that blends, merges, and links with you to form the new hybrid race that shall one day become the seventh. And this archetype carries the seed of that energy, the seed of the sixth, the seed of the seventh. And as it filters in, blends in, and merges in with the collective being of your entire system, it brings to you the energy of new birth, the formation of stars, the formation of galaxies, and all the civilizations contained therein. The potential and the promise of the exploration of new perspectives, new ideas, new relations among the stars, the opening of the ways to you, the opening of the pathways, the galactic pathways of interaction of communion, of connection, of inclusion, of immersion, of beingness. Breathe it in deeply and slowly and crystallize it for yourself and it will nurture you and it will guide you. And as you begin to see the different facets of your own being that may be connected to a variety, a vast array of extraterrestrial civilizations that are all encompassed in a single family, you find yourself now to be more and more included with every breath, that the doors are opening, the pathways are being laid before you to walk along, to walk that path to yourself, into yourself, and out to the star the new archetype of contact, the archetype of extraterrestrial and extra-dimensional energy that will infuse its very being in the vortex in which we are now immersed, above which we now float in our ship with our specific frequency, the first contact specialist frequency that is my lineage shall also be infused in this vortex so that you may feel that vibration and awaken your own, your own connections to the stars, your own familial connections, links, bridges to the stars that shall be awakened now from this point forward within you so that you may explore not only inwardly but outwardly and receive the gifts of this new archetype and the many stories that will unfold from it as you walk new paths and play out new ideas and new stories new perspectives. Allow yourselves to breathe deeply, gently, easily, lovingly. Allow that new energy, the new archetype to caress you, to feel yourself floating in its embrace. To feel the waves of its support. It is, at one and the same time, unfamiliar yet familiar. It is new. It is the idea of exploration itself, bringing to you new horizons, uncharted water, for you are now truly entering the unknown. But fear not, for this archetype brings you in this unknown, not an empty void, but a reality that is full to the brim of souls in celebration of your arrival at this time, joining the family 
the interstellar and intergalactic and multiverse family to which you belong and have always belonged, but are now awakening to. Now that you have created the vibration sufficient to allow this archetype in to the collective energy of your civilization, you have now the key and the unique link to the stars that will begin to accelerate the idea of contact as it infuses itself within this vortex and the array can be one permission slip focal point a technological simulacrum that will allow you to all share one focal point thousands upon thousands upon thousands of you all with the same intention all focusing on the same symbol all focusing in the same area all tuning that vortex to the specific frequency of contact and you will see the changes come within yourself and without open up and let go of all of your assumptions open up and let go of all your limitations open up and let go of all the things that hold you back open up and let go of all the things that are not relevant for your life open up and embrace and respect each other all the beings on your world all the beings off your world and all that is be at peace within your hearts your minds and your souls and your body be at peace and know that this is the beginning of a new chapter of your reality with new opportunities that have never been available to you before new doorways to walk through new ideas that will emerge from the center of your creative spark Float freely now in this energy and allow it to begin to crystallize from the holotope and the underlying template realities of fractal phi and Fibonacci ratios into the hexagonal array that shall embody all these energies and all these ideas and act as the magnifying and focusing lens for your intentions for contact. Breathe it in and let it out. Breathe it in and let it out. Breathe it in and let it out. Allow your lights to dim, allow your music to soften and just allow yourselves to float freely now, effortlessly, unburdened, and just float in the embrace of contact. For we are here, and we always have been. And now you will begin to know that you are truly never alone our unconditional love to you all float in peace sweet dreams we will see you sooner than you think